أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I can hear you Okay, Ramadan Kareem And the answer is Allahu Akram Okay, we're going to start with the recitation of Quran as we normally do And today we will look at Surah Zilzal Okay this is surah number 99. It's also known as Al-Zalzala. So let's first see what that means. Zilzal comes from Zalzala, which means to trip, to stumble over and over and over again. See, an earthquake has no stable footing. So that's what Zilzal is about. The shaking where you trip over again and again and again. The focus of the surah is that Everything, all our deeds, the intentions and the actions will be revealed on the day of Qiyamah when the earth unloads her burden. And maybe the easiest way I can explain it to you, the moment you think of Zilzal, think of a mommy with a baby in her tummy. The baby has to come out. And before the baby comes out, mom has to go through some contractions. And that's the earth is going to contract, it's going to shake, and it's going to let everything out. See, the Makkans believed in one God. They believed there was a creator. But they could not understand how the world would end. For them, they thought, how can there be a record of everything? How can somebody somewhere keep a record of everything everyone does? And even if that did happen, then they said, we have our gods and they're going to save us. This surah is not about reward or punishment. It's basically telling you and me that everything is going to be revealed. Whatever we do, whatever we think, we're going to see it all. I'm gonna over, going to go over the surah. It's not very long, but we need to understand it. When Allah says, When the earth is repeatedly, violently shaken, Zalzalite sort of happens and stops, happens and stops, just like those contractions. Maybe a bit like Waswasa as well. You know, when we get these things in our, in our head, they come and they go, they come and they go. وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا And the earth will, أَخْرَجَ will take out its weight. It's, see, أَثْقَالَهَا is something that's heavy. It's plural. The singular is thicker, which is heavy. It also describes the large, large, last stages of pregnancy of a mom. So here, it actually, like I said, it's telling you the earth is pregnant with the burden of all humanity and their deeds. And she's going to let it all out, just like a mother giving birth. That's why it's called Mother Earth. And then, The human being will ask, what is wrong with you? It's going to tell the earth, what's wrong with it? Because the human being forgets. See, insan comes to the word nasya, to forget. To forget that everything is going to be shown. Now, what's going to happen? On that day, the earth will tell her news. In other words, she'll spill her beans. She will say everything. Cover is something you can figure out for yourself. It's only for the past and the present. So she's going to say exactly what you knew about yourself. Why will she do this? Because your Rab inspired the earth to do what it had to do. A mom who is pregnant, who has a baby, has to make sure that the baby comes out. In the same way, the earth, it's its destiny. It will take out what's in it. So what will she show? On that day, she will take out, now ashtat comes from shatta. Shatta means broken bits. She'll show all these bits and she'll show our deeds. See, at the moment, humanity is one humanity. On that day, we will be separated, fragmented according to our deeds. We will be broken into groups according to our deeds. And then Allah says, فَمَنْ يَأْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى If you do even a tiny atom's worth of good, you will see it. Dharra is the smaller, the smallest thing, the more weightless, the more small. So every last detail is captured. He knows everything and it will be shown to us. And then, And even the smallest of evil deeds will be shown. The good, khair is good, shara is evil. Both will be shown, every last detail. 
it's quite a scary one to read okay and the the surah is used for protection so I'm going to use my dad's Quran again I showed it to you and we're going to recite this surah you got your Quran with you so read with me please La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ida zulzilat al-ardu zilzalaha. Wa akhrajat al-ardu athqalaha. Wa qala al-insanu ma laha. Yawma idhin tuhadith wa akhbaraha. بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين and I told you even if you know it by heart look at the words recite it and make sure you have one Quran keep it annotate it and if you've got a Quran from your from your grandma and your parents or great grandma or wherever treasure them because they have all the vibes of their recitation in them Okay, we're going to look at du'as now, and we're going to recite as we normally do. Ya Ali, Ya Azim, Allahumma Adkhil, Allahumma Rabbi Shahri Ramadan. I hate calling them small du'as because they have so much in them. They're phenomenal du'as. And then we will do a little bit about du'a liftita as we normally do and recite it. So if you're ready with your books, your du'a books, please recite with me. I still prefer the du'a books with the big writing like that. You can download them off Fatima or you can order them for later and be able to read from them. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Ya Aliyu, Ya Azim, Ya Ghafuru, Ya Rahim, Anta Rabbul Azim, Alladhi laysa kamithlihi shay' wa huwa al-sami' al-basir, wa hadha shaharun azzamtahu, wa karramtahu, wa sharraftahu, wa fadhaltahu ala al-shuhur, wa huwa shaharu alladhi faradhta siyamahu alayhi. وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر فيا ذا المن ولا يمن عليك من علي بفكاك ركبتي من النار في من تمن عليه وادخلني الجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ادخل على أحل الكبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جايع اللهم اكس كل عريان اللهم اقضي دين كل مدين اللهم فرجا كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل سير اللهم اصلح كل فاسد من امور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اكذينا الدين واغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن وافترثت على عبادك فيه الصيام سل على محمد وعلى محمد ورزقني حج بيتك الحرام في آم هذا وفي كل يام واغفر لي تلك الذنوب العظام فإنه لا يغفرها غيرك يا رحمن يا علام اللهم سل على محمد وعال محمد So now we're going to go to section 20 or part 20 of Dua Al-Iftata And here we say اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملناه What you have made us know of the truth help us bear it 
You know, sometimes when we know something, it's really hard to then practice on it. So that's what we're asking him. وَمَا قَصُرْنَا عَنْهُ فَبَلِّغْنَا And where we fall short, where we don't reach what we have to do, help us reach it. اللَّهُمَّ الْمُنْبِهِ شَعْفَنَا Put our affairs in order. Make everything okay. وَشْعَبْ بِهِ سَدْعَنَا Unite us. Where we are separated, unite us. Where we have cracks, join our cracks together. Make us a lot. We're so few. Make us a lot. Give us honor. Make us self-sufficient. Make us rich. Pull us out of debt. Remove from us our poverty. Fill the gaps in our confusion. I love this. Make easy our difficulties. Then we tell him, Brighten our faces. Free our prisoners. And that can be prisoners of anything. Sometimes we're prisoners of... of where we don't forgive prisoners of lots of different things. Grant our requests. Fulfill our promises. Now that doesn't mean Allah is going to fulfill our promises. It means help us to fulfill our promises. It makes us aware of that. Answer our call to you. And then we tell him. Give us what we ask for. Make us reach what we aspire for in the world and in the hereafter. And then the last bit. Oh, that's beautiful. Give us more than we expect, please. It's beautiful. So recite dua, lift it down with me, please. Right, let's start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma inni aftatihu al-thana bihamdik. Wa anta musaddidun lis-sawabi bimannik. Wa ikantu anna kanta rahamun rahimin. Fi mawdi al-afwi wal-rahma. Wa ashaddu al-mu'aqibin. Fi mawdi al-nakali wal-nakima. Wa a'adhamu al-mutajabbirin. Fi mawdi al-kibriyai wal-adhama. Allahumma a'adhinta li fi du'aika wa mas'alatik. Fasma' ya sami'u mid'ati. Wa ajib ya rahimu da'wati. Wa aqil ya ghafuru athrati. Fakam ya ilahi. Min kurbatin qad farrajtaha. Wa humumin qad kashaftaha. Wa athratin qad aqaltaha. Wa rahmatin qad nashartaha. Wa halqati balain qad fakaktaha. Alhamdulillahi alladhi lam yattaqi sahibatan wala wala. ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره محمده الظاهر بالكرم مجد الباسط بالجود يد الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العتا إلا جودا وقرما إنه هو العزيز الوحاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير مع حاجة بي إليه عظيمة وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إن عفك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيتي وسفك عن ظلمي وسترق على قبيه عملي وهل مكان كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطي وعمدي أتمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فصرت عدوك عامنا وأسألك مستعنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبتعني يتبت بجحلي عليك ولعل الذي يبتعني هو خير لي لإلمك بآقبة الأمور 
فلم ار مولا کریم اصور اعلیٰ عبد اللہ من کالے یا ربی ان کچونی فلک موسیقی الحمد للہ مالک الملک مجر الفلک مسخر الریا فالک الاسبا تیان الدین رب العالمین الحمد للہ علا حلمی بعد علمی والحمد للہ علا عفوی بعد قدرتی والحمد للہ علا طول اناتی فی غضبی وہو قادر علا ما یرید الحمد للہ خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالک الاسبا دل جلال والاکرام والفضل والعنام الذي بعض فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادل ولا شبيه يشاقل ولا ظهير يعادد قحر بزته العزة وتواضع لأدمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل أورة وأنا أعصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنية قد أعتاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبحجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه هامدا واذكره مسبها الحمد لله الذي لا يحتق هجا ولا يغلق باب ولا يرد سائل ولا يخيب عامل الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستقبلين ويخلق ملوكا ويستقلف آخرين والحمد لله كاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الحاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستسرقين موذي هاجات التالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف العرض وامارها وتموج البهار ومن يسبه في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتديا لولا عن حدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويتئم ولا يتئم ويميت الأحياء ويحي الموت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وعمينك وسفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأسكى وأنما وعتيب وعتهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحن ننت وسلمت على عهد من إبادك وعن بيائك ورسلك وصفتك وأحل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وسل على علي نمير المؤمنين ووسي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وهجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبي العظيم وسل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الصحراء سيدة النساء العالمين وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الحدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أحل الجنة وصل على عمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الحادي المهدي هججك على إبادك وأمنائك في بلادك 
صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وسل على ولي نمرك القائم المعمر والعدل المنتذر وهفه بملائكتك المقربين وعيده بروه القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استقلفه في الأرض كما استقلفت الذين من قبلي مقن له دينه الذي ارتذيته لا عبدله من بعد خوفي أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيعا اللهم عزه وعزز بي وانصره وانتسر بي وانصره نسرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم اظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستغفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تؤز بها الإسلام وأحلى وتذل بها النفاك وأحلى وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى تاتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها قرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فعملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المن به شعفنا واشعب به سدعنا وارتك به فتقنا وكثر به خلتنا وعزز به ذلتنا وأغني به عائلنا واقض به مجرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عصرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به يسرنا وعنجه به تلبتنا وعنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا واعتنا به سعلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة يا مالنا واعتنا به فوق رقبتنا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. Can we have a salawat, please? اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. So all the pictures I got today were either of Najaf. Now you've got a picture on the screen of the mosque of Najaf. Or I had Imam Ali or Ali written in beautiful calligraphy. So Hassan, Fatima, Ali Jafar, Zainab. Habiba and Zaina all sent me these pictures. Then there were the pictures from triplets. So they're called Hina, Humaira and Hala. Oh my goodness. I just couldn't get over them. So they had made frames for their bedsides, which had Ali written on them. They painted them so beautifully. One of them is embroidering them. So this is what they said. So they said, so me auntie, the last thing we see before we go to sleep is Ali. And the first thing we see when we wake up in the morning is Ali. My goodness. I, it just took me back. It won, I wanted to just there and then make a frame as well and put it on my bedside. So I too would be able to see that. But then I thought, maybe I'd do one with Muhammad and Ali and Fatima and Hassan. Maybe I'll do one with all the Masumin. Well, that's something to do. And when you look at the A to Z of Salah, A4, Adhan, B4, book, C4, come on, connect, D4, are you, are you saying these with me? I can hear you. D4, Dua, E4, essential. Now remember we talked about Rukn and Ghair Rukn, and e, e was essential. F for forgiveness, G4, gratitude, H4, home, you had your comfort corner at home. I for intention, J4, Jahar, Remember Jahar? Loudly, okay. Jama'a or Jumu'a as well. K for Kaaba, L for Layl, M for Masjid, N for Noor. Oh my goodness, the energy, the divine energy. O for one and the obedience. Today we're going to look at peace. And peace is the Taslim. The Taslim is the last wajib act of Salah. Right at the end. Now many of us, it's wajib, but it's not a rukn. It's not essential. Many of us may say, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillah as-salihin. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Only the third one is wajib. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is wajib. That ends the salah. The other two are not wajib. They're mustahab. But it's good to read all three together but say you're in a hurry and you wanted to read salah it's better to read less and properly than more and just hurry it up very quickly 
Now, just a little bit about this salah, this taslim, this peace. You see, salah is known as mi'raj al-mu'mineen. We're going on a journey. Mi'raj means going up to Allah, going up somewhere. In other words, within ourselves, we're, we're taking ourselves to Allah. So here, you start the journey with takbiratul ihram. We connect with Allah. We say, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than anything or anyone. And now I'm on my journey to meet him. When I say meet him, it's metaphorical. That means I'm going on my journey to reach my personal best. I want to just focus totally on Allah. Now when we end the salah, it's like you're coming back to earth. So you've gone way, way above in the spiritual world. But now you're coming back to earth. And the first thing you do is you focus on creation. And the first one you focus on is the most awesome man who walked the earth, the best of creation. That's why you say, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is why you do that. You start with the best. Then you say, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Then you connect with the best of servants, the righteous servants. And then you say to everyone, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So you see, you're coming back, and the first thing you do when you come back somewhere is you greet them. Even when you come back from a journey, you come back home, you come inside, you say, Assalamu alaikum. It's exactly the same thing. The salah was a journey. It's really important to understand that. And when we say salam, it's a greeting of peace, but it's a prayer to express our wish that whoever we're saying salam to remains safe from the fire. That's basically what we're saying. We want you to remain safe from everything that's wrong. When I thought of peace, there's nobody else I can think of except Imam Ali. Um, I'm going to tell you something about my life so you understand what I'm saying. For as long as I can remember, as long as I can remember, I always wanted to go and visit Najaf. Always. And countless times my heart used to sink when people used to tell me, my goodness, you recite much less and he hasn't called you? And I used to think, Maybe I'm not worthy of being called. As all the time, they tell me, oh, everybody used to say they're going for ziyara. And I used to think, I really, really want to go. But I would remember a story told by Ayatollah Bahajat. For those of you who haven't gone, you will go one day. But remember this story. So Ayatollah Bahajat says that there was these people who were going to visit Imam Rida. And on the way, when they passed all the other farms, they would tell all the farmers, come with me, come with me, we're going to, to Imam Rida. When they came to one of the farmers, he said, I can't leave my farm. I just can't. I can't leave these animals. I can't leave my family right now. I can't come with you. So they said, what's wrong with you? You're only worried about your farm and your people. Come on, we're going to the ziyarat of Imam. You have to come. And he couldn't. So he said, wait. And he turned towards Mashhad and he said, Assalamu alayka, ya ibn Rasulullah. And an answer came back. Wa alayka salam. And everybody else kept quiet and I used to console myself by reciting Ziyarat Ashura, the Ziyarat of Imam, Imam Ali, the du'as of Imam Ali, du'a al-Kumail, everything I could lay my hands on about Ziyarat I would read and read and read. In fact I even compiled a journal. I could see Najaf and Karbala with my soul but I couldn't see it with my eyes and in 2007 was the first time I thought oh my goodness I had the opportunity to go. I remembered looking at the Haram for the first time it was like my soul was tripping over rainbows. It was just something else. And I'm going to read you a bit from my diary so you understand how it felt. So this is what I wrote at the Haram at last. My soul is tripping over rainbows. I've come with my story, which I've offloaded, which I want to offload to the one who makes everything okay, who better than the most perfect student of the Prophet to tell this story to. But my story pales in comparison to the ones I hear at the Haram. The mom who's brought a picture of her son whom she hasn't seen for a year. The young woman who has a baby blanket and pleads for a baby. The teenager in a wheelchair and then a little girl, barely, barely eight, who weeps in a corner. I go up to her and I give her a tissue. She looks at me, her eyelashes glistening with tears, and she says, Baba Marid, my dad is ill. I weep with her and I hug her. I look around. Did the two orphans of Imam Ali, that is Imam Hassan and Hussain, did they ever know what peace they had created when they buried their father in the darkness of the night some 1400 years ago? My eyes don't stop tearing, don't stop crying. I am home. I don't want to be anywhere else. I want to be here. 
I walk out into the sun and I thank him for the grace of experiencing utter peace. And that's what you get when you go to Najaf. There is so much more I'd like to tell you about Najaf, but let me tell you about when I was leaving Najaf. And since then I've been able to go every year. But when I came to say goodbye to Abul Hassan, how do I say goodbye to the one whose name I take, standing, sitting, sleeping, since I started speaking? The only consolation being that I was going to Karbala to his reflections, which is Abu Abdullah and Abu Fat. You know, you got to pray. When you pray for your hajat and your Laylatul Qadr tomorrow, pray you are able to visit these places. They are just phenomenal. One day we will, it will all open up and we'll be able to go there is no peace like the peace you find there. You find there. Let's talk a little bit about Najaf and then about Imam Ali. Because as I've written over there, today is all about Imam Ali al -Islam and nobody else. Okay. So Najaf is about 10 kilometers from Kufa. So think about it. 10 kilometers. That's the distance Imam Hassan Hussein walked to bury him. It's about 90 kilometers from Karbala. Najaf actually means the place that is hard for water to reach. Because it's on a high ground. And remember where Prophet Nu made his ark? Here, where water was hard to reach. And that's why people were mocking him. The place where Imam Ali is buried, which is Najaf, was hidden for about 90 years. Only a few companions of, of Imam knew it. It is only when Imam Sadiq showed the place that we started knowing, people started knowing about it. The first person to put a dome on top was Harun Rashid. It was a dome made out of red mud. In the middle of the 5th century, and this is just historical information, but you need to know about it. Sheikh Tusi um, moved to Najaf from Tus. You know, when, when an alim is called, if he's called Tusi, it means he came from Tus. If we now say Sistani, he came from Sistan. That's how you know them, okay? Inshallah, one day we will have a, a Stan Mori. That'd be so cool. Anyway, so this... And he started this seminary, in other words, he started a university of learning. And it was a unique university, a university where the instructions were so unique that the student could select his teacher topic and his lecture times. And they did so well that they came to the greatest or the highest degree of learning, which was Ijtihad. At the moment, the person who heads this is Sayyid Ali Hussein al Sistani, a phenomenal man. He came to Najaf in 1951 to, to study religion. Do you know today he lives in a tiny house in the in the old city about 200 meters away from the Haram of Imam Ali. There are many libraries. One of one of its rare books in one of the libraries is a Quran that is written by Imam Ali himself in Kufic style. Look it up. Look at how Kufic style is. Maybe you can copy it. There's no dots on the letters. And the copy was written on deer skin. It has the stamp of Imam Hassan on it, which proves its authenticity. And Najaf also has precious stones. Um, the beautiful ones called Dura Najaf, which are like transparent pearls. If you wear them, they have so many benefits. Maybe one day we'll look at the benefits of all those stones. But I'd like to talk about Imam Ali today. I just need you to listen and maybe make some notes and maybe learn a bit more about him. We have a book like this, which you can download oh, that way, which you can download off the Q Fatima site. And it'll give you sort of a conceptual look at his life okay so when you think of imam ali like we said when i talked about the prophet i told you ttc do you remember truth truthful trustworthy and compassionate so with those characters as well we find for imam ali think of three things and i hated to use the the, the the letters because it came to KGB and I didn't like that so you could call it BGK whatever you want to do so bravery generosity and knowledge that's that's what Imam Ali was all about so divide his life into three just as we when we were talking about the Prophet we did some divisions so divide his life into three can you do that so birth to wafat quite easy to remember 33 and 33 is an easy number to remember then you have wafat. When I'm talking about wafat, I'm talking about wafat of the Prophet. So birth to wafat of the Prophet. Then you have wafat of the Prophet to the Khilafa, which means to the time he actually was appointed. Or he was always the leader of the Muslims. But this is when they officially said, we want you to be there. 
Then from Khilafah to Shahada, which was five years. So if you look at his life, 33, 58, 63. Okay, keep that in your mind. So let's look at birth to Wafat. He was totally, totally the student of Rasulullah. He, he says when he was five, I was still a young child when the Prophet took me from my parents. I used to cling to him. Each day a new aspect of his character would shine out and I would accept it and I would follow its command. He's the, when he was 10 was when there was Ba'that. Remember, there's 30 years between him and the Prophet. Ba'that means when the first five ayats of the Quran were, were revealed. And he's the first Muslim. The first Muslim, I say, the Khadija, he's the first Muslim. At 14, you had Dawud al Ashira, when the Prophet invites all his um, relations to tell them about Islam. The only one who lifts his hand is Imam Ali. He's known from about 14 to 20. He's the protector of the Prophet. He's known as his bodyguard. He was always his bodyguard. Think of Imam Ali. Think of perfect student. Think of bodyguard. They used to call him Qadim, which means a breaker of, or, or thrower, the breaker of stones. Nobody dared to throw anything at the Prophet because he was always there. At 23, he sleeps in the bed of the Prophet. You know, at Hijra, there were three things he did. Sleep in his bed. He made sure he stayed behind to give back all the trusts that everybody had left with the Prophet. So people had kept things for safekeeping. He gave them back and he escorted the three Fatimas to Medina. Look what the Quran says. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 207. nas and from people. There are those who sell themselves so that they may earn the pleasure of Allah. Allah is affectionate to his heart. This is Imam Ali. He's, he knew that the Makkans wanted to kill the Prophet. That's what they wanted to do. So they had planned that they would all get together, somebody from one person from each of the um, of the families, and they would come and they would kill the Prophet. And the Prophet left for Hijrah. It was Imam Ali in the bed. When they lifted the cover and they saw Imam Ali, they were, they were disappointed that they found him, that they found him instead of the Prophet. But he slept there. And they got to Medina. Um, and the Prophet made brotherhood that he means one ansar of brotherhood of the a brother of the muhajis the makkans and the, the people of medina he tells imam ali you are my brother in the dunya and in the akhirah he married say the fatima at 25 my goodness and if you look at the way they lived he said i never angered fatima i never asked her to do something she didn't like to to the day she died neither did she anger me in fact whenever i looked at her all depression and sadness lifted from my heart we lived like two pigeons in a cocoon he was the champion of Badr, of Ahad, of Ahzab. My goodness, you probably, you've got to read history. The battles are so interesting to read about. You know, in Ahzab, you had Amr bin Abdul. Everybody was scared of him. But it was Imam Ali who fights him. In Hudaybiyah, he was the scribe. He wrote the treaty. In Khaybar, my goodness, all the Munajah talk about him. He lifted the gate with his fingers. This is a heavy gate. But when he came home, he couldn't even break bread. I was so tired. So that strength was spiritual strength. Remember we talked about in Surah Al-Rum, in, in Surah Al do you remember? We said at the end, never underestimate the strength of Iman. It's phenomenal. It is at this battle that the Prophet called him Asadullah, the Lion of Allah. I just love reading about him. At 31, you had the conquest of Makkah. And I can imagine seeing him. He was on the shoulders of the Prophet. And the, the, you know, they moved, they threw out all the idols of the Kaaba. And it was him who stood on the shoulders of the Prophet. In Hunayn, you know, Imam Sajjad in his sermon to Yazid, he says, I am the son of Badr and Hunayn. Read about it. it. They are phenomenal places to see the bravery of this phenomenal person. Then you have Ayatul Tathir. You all know Ayatul Tathir. Recite it in Hadith al Kisa. What do you read? إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ رِيدْ سَحْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُتَحِرَكُمْ تَتْهِيرًا He is part of Ayatul Tatir. In Ayatul Mubahila, which happened the day after, he is the nafs of Rasulullah. I don't know what to say. And then Ghadir. I mean, what can you say about Ghadir? So the ayah is revealed. This is ayah 67. You know what surah it is? What is surah number 5? Ma'idah. Okay, the ayah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الرَّسُولُ O Prophet, 
Balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. Deliver what has revealed to you from your Rabb. Wa in taf'al fa ma balaghta risalata. If you do not do it, it's as though you've done you've not done anything. You haven't delivered any message of his. Wallahu ya'simuka min an-nas. Allah will protect you from the people. Inna Allah la yahdil qawm al-kafirin. Allah does not guide people who cover up the truth. So what was it? That was supposed to be revealed that Allah says if you don't reveal it you have revealed nothing. One you all know this. Do you know which bit? You're right. Man kuntu maulahu fa hadha aliyun maulahu. For whomsoever I am maula Ali is his maula. It's just phenomenal and as soon as he said that the part the, the, the part of ayah 3 also of which surah is Maida, okay, was revealed. This day I have perfected your religion for you. And completed my favors upon you. And I am happy, I am content that Islam is your religion. You will submit to me. It's just amazing. This is all Imam Ali. And, and this is the Quran I'm quoting. And then obviously... He was so sad because the Prophet dies and then 75 days later Sayyidina Fatima dies and the words that he says are just that, you know, it, this brave man, this towering man that you just don't know what, where that strength comes from. He says when he buries Sayyidina Fatima, it is the wish of a sincere heart which loved and always loved you both. He's talking to the Prophet as well. A heart which will cherish and will ca carry your memories to its grave. Goodbye, O daughter of the chosen messenger of God. May you rest in peace which humankind denied you in this world. Now look what he says. If I leave your grave to go to my place, it's not because I'm tired of your company. I wish I could stay here till the end of my life and if I made a permanent home on your grave it will not be because I doubt the reward that God has reserved for those who have suffered goodbye may God's peace and blessings be with you this great man broke then he was broken it is this man would cry in the middle of the night when you cry when we read munajat of Imam Ali and talk to Allah with those tears yet during the day Asadullah the lion of Allah the second phase of his life, 33 to 57. Now remember at that time, the Muslims took away his right of leadership. The Prophet said, Man kuntu maulahu, fahada aliyun maulahu. He is the leader after me. But they took it away. But he wanted to preserve Islamic unity. He didn't want to cause a battle or a kafafal. So he says, I bore with patience like a man with a thorn in his eyes and a bone in his throat. The only reason he did this was to be able to keep the Muslims together. And then finally when he's 58, they urge him, they beg him to come. They want him to be their leader. He makes Kufa the capital. He transfers the capital of his government to Kufa from Medina because it was more centrally placed in the empire. And he uses this time to teach the Quran as it ought to be taught and to be able to implement the Sunnah of the Prophet. That means what the Prophet had taught to be able to do that. And that was hard for people because they'd gone back into their unfairness and injustices. You had the battles of Sifin with Muawiyah and Naharwan. Read about them. And then finally, on the 19th of Ramadan, 40 after Hijrah. My goodness, we know what happened. We really got to understand who this phenomenal man was. I remember when I was very, very young, my father used to tell me that in your salah, when you say, al-mustaqim," my child, remember that the one who will take you to this path, whom you should learn about, is Ali, for he was the most perfect student of Rasulullah. You know when Quran says, when we say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, we answer Sirat al Ladina an Amta alayhim. The path of those whom you have blessed. Oh, definitely all the other prophets. Definitely Rasulullah. But he's way up there. And then we've got to go to the perfect student to know how to be a student of this most awesome man. And it is he who you look at as Sirat al Mustaqim. Before I look 
adds Dukhan if we have so, if we have some time because we've looked at Rum and Ankabut. I'd like to recite the Ziyar of Imam Ali. And the way I like to recite it is to look at what you've got in Dua al iftita the same words, but instead of saying Allahumma wa salli ala, let's say Assalamu alaikum. So turn to your um, page in Dua al iftita um, where you're looking at Amirul Mu'mineen. And let's recite it together, okay? Assalamu alaikum ya Amirul Mu'mineen. ووسي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك. But this is the bit I want you to remember. وآيتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم. The most important sign and the great news. He is نبع العظيم. When you read Surah Al-Naba, think about it. We call him here Nabail Adim and Ayatikal Ayatikal Kubra, the greatest of Allah's signs. So this is how we need to look at him and we need to study his life. Get a copy of Najul Balagha. They do one for children too. Read it, read his words. That's how you will know him. So inshallah you will look at his life, not only for today, but throughout your life, so that you think Ali, you breathe Ali, you talk Ali, you walk Ali. You are an embodiment of Ali, and we can call ourselves the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib. So, in the time I've got left, because tomorrow we will be doing the um, Amals of Laylatul Qadr, we've looked at Surah um, Ankabut and we've looked at Surah Rum, which is Surah number 29 and Surah number 30. But another Surah that we read is Surah Al Dukhan, and that's Surah number 44. It's a Makki Surah, it has 59 ayat, and Dukhan means smoke. Now, what I suggest you do is that every time you think of smoke, what do you think of? You think of fire. And every time you think of fire, you should think of a fire alarm because that warns you, that actually tells you there's a fire. This surah is about warning. Think about Dukhan, think about smoke, think about warning. The major part of the surah talks about warning and it warns us, it warns those who mock revelation, who commit injustice. But first, let me talk about Dukhan a little bit. Dukhan is part of a group of surah known as Hawamim. Hawamim means they all start with Hamim. That's 40 to 46. And they're revealed in order as well. The Prophet said, I was given Hawamim as a gift. There was a man called Abu Darda who actually built a mosque. And when people asked him, why did you make, build this mosque? He would say, I just hope somebody will recite Hawamim in it. Um, Somebody came to the Prophet and said, I'm old, my memory is imperfect, I, I can't even speak properly. The Prophet said, just read the surahs beginning with Hamim and you'll see what will happen. He also said, if you want to roam in the gardens of Jannah, recite Hamim. I mean, you just want to, okay? So start with Surah Al-Dukhan. So the focus of the surah is, first of all, the Quran was revealed on a blessed night in which all affairs are decreed. Now, I've talked about this many a times, but let me repeat it again. Laylatum Mubarakatun. And Barakah is benefits beyond expectation and it awakes the good that is sleeping inside you. So that's what this night will do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a warning to those who mock revelation. Who say, oh, this is all, this is not true. They, you know, they used to mock the prophet and they used to commit injustice. And then there's a tour of Jahannam and Jannah and there's a comparison in there. Um, if you recite Dukhan at night, in the morning there'll be 70,000 angels. You know, till morning they'll be asking for forgiveness for you. So tomorrow, inshallah, you know, we're going to recite it. If we don't recite it together, you will recite it in the evening. We've divided it into eight sections. The first section, the Quran is revealed on a blessed night. All decisions of life are made. This is what the Quran says itself. The second section is a warning to those who don't believe in the day of judgment. The third section gives you an example of somebody like that. And it was Fir'aun, his arrogance, how he, ex he was so extravagant, he was wasteful. And how he exploited the Bani Israel. My goodness, the way he treated them so badly. And then Allah says in this surah how everything he had, his gardens, his palaces, his assets were all left behind. Section four is those who defy. And when you say defy, not only do they not believe in resurrection, they say, okay, bring it about if you're truthful. Bring about our fathers from the past if you're truthful. And Allah says here, the earth and the heavens were not created for sport. There's a purpose in creation. 
in section five. It's terrifying. It's really terrifying. It's scary. I mean, there's there's the image of Jahannam. And you, you don't even want to look at it. When you look at it, you want to read it. You sort of think, I don't want to see this. It's that scary. Section six. Oh, my goodness. It's so beautiful. That's Ayah 51 to 57. And I'm looking again at my father's Quran. And that is about Jannah. It starts off with, Innal muttaqina fi maqamin amin. Those who are God conscious are in this safe awesome place there's gardens and there's fountains they're wearing these naturally made silk clothes it's beautiful um, oh, it's just beautiful so that's section 6 section 7 says Quran has been made easy on the tongue don't say it's difficult look what Allah says he says We've made it easy for you. So who is there to even mind? Who is there to try a little bit to connect to it? And finally, the last section is wait. It says, the last ayah in fact, فَرْتَقِبْ Wait. إِنَّهُمْ مُرْتَقِبُونَ They too are waiting. So they, the Makkans, were waiting for the Prophet's defeat. And the Prophet was waiting for the Makkans to believe in guidance. Look at the difference. So go back again. Through to Dukhan, you're going to think of warning. You're going to think of Laylatul Mubarakat. That means a night in which there is so much baraka, more than we expect, and a night which will wake up that which is dormant, which is good and is dormant inside us. Dormant means it's sleeping inside us, needs to be woken up. So, inshallah, you will prepare for tomorrow. Your dua books, your Quran, your sadaqa, everything we've talked about. A light iftar, not a heavy iftar, but we'll, I'll see you again tomorrow at 4 o'clock, inshallah. And we will do the amals for Laylatul Qadr. This is Laylatul Qadr al Kubra, the biggest night of all. Make sure you're really well prepared for it. Let us end with the Surah Al Fatiha, the dua for protection, and the ziyarah of Imam Hussein. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله الذي close your eyes look down ask Allah to give the thawabs to all the marhumin, especially those of your family. Pray for those who are ill and pray for those who are in trouble. Let's read the dua for protection. Li khamsatun utfi biha harra al-waba il-hatima al-mustafa wal-murtada wa abnahuma wal-fatima Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah al-lati halat bi finaik alayka minni salamullahi abadam ma baqitu wa baqi al-layl wa al-nahar wa la ja'alahu allahu akhir al-ahdi minni li ziyaratikum Assalamu ala al-Husayn wa ala Ali ibn al-Husayn wa ala awlaad al-Husayn wa ala ashab al-Husayn Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad Well, let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of Ahlul Qur'an to be those who are taken as the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u alim fi umani al-akareem.